These are the remains of a paper crit pot. A good example of what frost can do to a bonsai pot that wasn't designed to be left outside in winter. And it only took a single winter to break the pot down to little pieces. I only noticed the damage in spring when I wanted to move my elm tree bonsai which was occupying the pot at the time. The elm was safely relocated and I set aside all the bits and pieces to be reassembled at some point. And then I read about the Japanese practice of kintsugi, which literally translates to golden joinery. Kintsugi, also known as kintsukuroi, is the Japanese art of mending broken pots by joining the pieces back together using lacquer dusted with gold, silver or platinum powder. Whether fine or coarse, thin or thick, kintsugi repairs highlight existing flaws instead of hiding them and make them part of the object history. Kintsugi is often used for restoring objects with sentimental value, which is exactly why I'm restoring my bonsai pot. It's the first one I made when I first got into bonsai many years ago. So I'm going to attempt putting it back together using a kintsugi inspired approach. First I have to clean up the pot fragments from all the dust and soil that may prevent properly gluing them back together. So let's get started. Some fragments have visible cracks which will always represent weak points if left untreated. I'm going to take them apart along these cracks so that I can glue them in place. After the washing was done, I had to let all the bonsai pot fragments dry up. So in the meanwhile, I started piecing back the 3D puzzle to have all the parts positioned for the glue up. I laid down some paper to cover my work table because I'm going to use epoxy. I got 5 minute epoxy which is suitable for all kinds of ceramics, pottery and even concrete. In the traditional approach to kintsugi, gluing is done using a lacquer made from the sap of the urushi tree. There's only a small amount of sap that can be extracted from the tree, after which it has to be cut down. The traditional technique is a slow process since it takes a long time for the lacquer to dry. With this in mind, I decided to use epoxy. You could add the gold pigment in the epoxy used for gluing, but I don't know how this would affect the bonding strength. So I decided to glue the pot back together first using plain epoxy to assure perfect bonding and then highlight the pot fracture lines in the second step. There's a bit of a learning curve when working with fast curing epoxy. I had plenty of gluing to do, so I learned a thing or two about the process. If you don't want to keep the pieces in place by hand until the epoxy cures, you can use a clamp, masking tape or a piece of string for this purpose as long as their shape allows it. Excess epoxy will squeeze out from the joint, so using too much epoxy will result in more squeeze out to be cleaned afterwards. Any excess squeeze out can be removed with a craft knife once the epoxy is fully cured. Hardened excess epoxy can also prevent proper joining, so make sure you also clean the joint side of each section which was previously glued. It's best to decide which pieces you're going to join next and do a test fit before mixing a batch of epoxy. There's not going to be much time for trial and error once the epoxy is mixed. Small imperfections in the positioning of glued pieces may cause slight misalignments of other segments. For this, you can use sandpaper to remove any high points that might cause such misalignments. Luckily, I only had to do this once, just before the final glue up.
In preparation for the Kintsugi style highlighting, I removed all the remaining excess epoxy from the glue joints and applied the light sanding with 1000 grit sandpaper. This is how the pot looked like at this point. I liked its aspect reminiscent of an ancient piece of pottery, so much so that for a minute there, I was tempted to stop here. What would you have done? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. For the final step, I used gold pigment powder, which you can buy from the arts and crafts stores. I mixed it with the epoxy to obtain a golden colored paste, which I then applied on the glue joints using the tip of a steel skewer. Being the first time I ever did this, I started with the underside of the pot, just in case something went wrong on my first try. I enjoyed this part even more than I enjoyed piecing back the pot. Drawing on the golden veins felt like a last symbolic gesture for bringing the pot back to life. In order to really enjoy the process without feeling rushed by the quick drying epoxy, I found it best to mix small amounts of epoxy at a time. It was a slow, but very peaceful operation. So if you're growing bonsai and still haven't mastered the art of patience, Kintsugi is a good exercise in patience. This is how my Kintsugi inspired bonsai pot repair looks like at the end. I like how the golden veins turned out, even though I'm not extremely happy with the yellow tint of the pigment. Didn't have much choice here, since it was the only gold pigment I could find. I'm happy I managed to bring this pot back to life, and I can't wait to find a suitable tree for it. If you have a broken pot laying around, I recommend trying out Kintsugi to restore it. And if you do, let me know how it turned out. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Thank you for watching. I'm Stefan and I'll see you in the next Odd Bonsai video.